Hello Leo, thank you very much for tuning in to your general read. For the main part of the read, I'm using Witch's Tarot by Ellen Dugan. For supportive oracle cards, Queen of the Moon Oracle by Stacey DeMarco. Already shuffled. Let's go ahead and see what we got going on here. One, two. There is like, there's like this moment you're heading for. Like, there's two spots in the environment that are causing, uh, like, all right, we'll get into it because there's something coming. And I feel like other people are like causing this weird disruption here. Let's, let's go ahead and, um, start with the beginning though because it's probably the rational way to handle it four of wands is how you're coming into this now this is something you've already established you're already established in this you've been a part of this you know what your role is you're fairly happy with that you do what you need to do you hold up your end of your responsibilities so it doesn't seem like a big issue you have the four of wands so when you're coming into this situation before it becomes an issue seems like everything's fine. Everything's cool as a cucumber. You know, not that everything's perfect, but it's pretty much what you expect. Nothing out of the norm, nothing to keep you up at night. Okay, so you got, you're coming into this next part with the, the Lunar God and the Nine of Swords. It's kind of like when the Lunar God pops in, to me, a lot of times what I see is something that looks a little bit different. It's almost like it's a little bit of curiosity, like this is a different way to view things. And this is just how I read this card. Um, there's trying to make sense of what is actually in front of you, trying to be okay with what's going on here, but also like things are starting to look a little odd. Things are looking different than you're used to. Things are not adding up the way you're comfortable with. Things are changing here. Uh, the moon also makes me feel like change. And when I'm getting this lunar god feel, it feels a little bit exciting, a little bit different, but it's also like this is contrary to what I'm used to, one of those feelings. And I, this is just my intuitive reading of this card, to be fair. If you look it up in the book, I don't know, it probably is something different, but I'm not worrying about that. Just in case you have a different feel for this card, because I'm just going with what I'm feeling from it. Now, when I'm getting the Nine of Swords, it's kind of like this isn't comfortable to me, and it doesn't feel right. I don't really like it. Um, you're trying to be okay with it, but you're not. You're not okay with it. Um, I feel like you're trying to absorb it. And you're not trying to make snap decisions. But while you're feeling it on the inside, you're just kind of like, no, 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 this, I don't like this. Um, that's what I'm feeling with these two cards together. Like, this isn't, this doesn't fit for me. And it's one of those things, I feel like the weirdest thing is, it's like, you're not looking at it like the what's being done is wrong. You're looking at it like, my connection to it doesn't feel correct. This doesn't feel like this is right for me. And that's how I feel you connecting to it. So you say something. Leo's typically not shy. You know, stereotypical Leo energy is not shy. Something isn't right. You don't feel good about it. You don't like it. You might take a moment to absorb it and think it over because you might be like, you might have this standpoint of like, I'm not just going to jump on this just because it seems out of place to me. I'm going to think about it for a minute. Give me a night to think about it. But if I don't like it, I'm going to say something. And you will say something. And I, that's what I'm getting with the Knight of Swords. It's like, all right, I'm not too big on this. Here's what I'm seeing. Here's what I'm feeling. And you come forward with this, how you feel about this. Um, something is like this, this whole change. I don't feel like it's bad, by the way. When I'm getting that masculine lunar god, it's not bad. It's just a different way of doing things. And to you, you're like, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just feeling like I don't think it's right for me and my connection here and what I'm seeing here, I don't feel like it's right. You can, you you communicate that. Communication is very good. How you're communicating might, you know, you know, that's up to you. You know how you're communicating. And everybody has their own style. Um, even with Leos, I don't feel like all Leos communicate the same. They may be very open to communicating, but how they communicate comes through in different flavors and colors. So how you're communicating, you know that better than I do in a general read, definitely. Um, obviously, you would know yourself better than I would either way. Um, this is what's happening, though. 
your influence, you communicating, this is the effect it's having. The chariot with the ten of pentacles with the seven of cups. So this is coming in. This is kind of like getting people to think. This is part, I feel you are getting some resistance, but not that much. You, I feel like you're more inspiring others who feel the same way. And when you say something, you voice your opinion like, I don't like this. And it's not like you're coming, I don't feel it negative. I don't feel your energy is negative. You're just saying, listen, this is what I'm seeing and this is what I don't like and this is why I don't like it. It's not negative. It's just flat out, this is how I'm viewing it. Other people seem to be standing right with you in this because I'm getting the chariot with that 10 of pentacles, like you're fortified, you have backup here. You have people who feel the same way and stand with you. And the seven of cups is saying, well, other people are like, yeah, I don't think it, it doesn't feel right to me either. But we need, to, uh, we need to accept this to some degree. We can't just push it off and say no. So what can we do to shape this a little better? And people are working with you trying to change things. Because you're like, I don't like this. This doesn't sound right to me. This doesn't feel right to me. And other people are like, yeah, yeah, we don't feel right about it either. But we got to accept some of it, don't we? And it's like there's a conversation that's created from this. And other people are putting in their two cents like, yeah... Um, this is how I'm feeling about it. This is how I'm viewing it. The Two of Pentacles is here with the Death card. Um, the Death card is a little bit shifty in this situation because I feel like people are kind of like, can we put this on pause? And that's the Two of Pentacles, but people literally want to discard this change. They just want to be like, that whole thing with this Lunar God thing, like just to give reference to that card, but like that, that whole thing, I don't want to do it. I don't think we should. Let's just keep doing things the way we have been. Let's not do all that. The Two of Pentacles, one of the things that the Two of Pentacles is saying, let's consider not doing this at all. <laughs> let's consider not even doing this change. Can we consider that? Because I think it's possible. Now, that's because the, the Death card comes in with the Two of Pentacles. Like People are saying, can we just not? Can we just not do this change? Now, Yes, the death card is a major arcana, but the way it flavors this reading as a part of the Two of Pentacles is like people want, there's a very strong need to not change along with whatever this lunar god is saying. Whatever this change that feels weird to you, feels odd, feels out of place, people are like, we just don't want to do it. There must be a way where we can just not do it. We just don't want to. And I'm getting, you're receiving that, and you're just kind of like, yeah. Ironically, I feel you pulling this in like, I, I, I want to agree with that, but you seem to know something here. You seem to see ahead of the schedule and you're just like, if we try to, if we try to not do this, it's kind of like you're damming up a river. You're just kind of like the water's got to go somewhere. And I feel like you're catching on to that part quite easily. You're like, well, we can dam up the river, but that water's going somewhere. So if we say no and we push back on this, then what happens? Because something will happen, and you're very sure of this. You know this. So you're kind of like, all right, all right, all right. And it's not like you're not willing to give up because of that. I'm not saying that. But you're kind of like, all right, got to plan ahead a little. If we want this to not happen, and we're going to dam up the river, where are we, we going to redirect this energy? Where are we going to send it off somewhere else so that we can get around this where how are we going to move the energy somewhere else so that you know damming up the river is one thing but we have to we have to send the water somewhere else how are we going to do that so we don't have to worry about this and there's creation with resilience here resilience Res yeah resilience so you're like all right we don't want this change to happen we all kind of agree but there's like there's to a degree here we have to do something so we have to find a way to like you know, appease the situation to where we don't have to change or at least not change that much. Trying to work with it, trying to work around it. You're like, all right, let me see how creative, what can we do? Creation is like, like you're brainstorming. Brainstorming, trying to make it happen. It's, I feel you trying. I feel you honestly giving it a full-hearted, Let's make it happen. Let's not do this change. Let's not do it because we don't want to. <laughs> it's not funny, but it's kind of funny because the tower hits. And it's like, oh, no. The t 
I mean, it's the lunar god, like, you know, not for nothing. Uh, you know, it's basically kind of like a moon cycle. Like, you, you can't stop the moon from revolving around the, the Earth. And not for nothing, if you did, just to put a little bit extra in there, if the moon disappeared, life on this planet would also disappear because it also has a lot to do with the way, you know, climate and weather moves. So there's a lot to the moon. Like, basically, the tower is saying, that's nice, good try, no, you're doing it. And it's just not nice. The tower is not nice. It's like, oh, you don't want to do this? Haha, <laughs> that's funny. Do it. And it's not nice. And I know it's coming forward, forward aggressively. It's not nice. And what I'm getting here is like you're getting pushback, a snap. Like it's like a, it's a snapback. Like, oh, no, you're changing. Oh, no, this is happening. Um, and it's weird because I feel like you're kind of – it's kind of like a jolt. It's not like you're getting like a big problem with it, but it's just kind of like, nope. Um, no, that's not an option to not do this. It's not an option to dam up the river and send the water somewhere else. That's that's not an option. This is going to go through this way, and this is how we're going to do it. Somebody says, no, we're not changing this. This is going to keep going the way it's been designed. And what happens here is the fool in the environment, like when somebody else pulls in and pushes in and pushes back and says, no, this is going forward. This has to go forward. I feel like other people are just kind of like, they're a little shell-shocked by it, but they're like, okay. I For some reason, this tower card hitting is quite the jolt. Like, it's kind of like when you get shocked and you're just like, oh. Like, it just, it, it, it knocks you off your game and you're just kind of like, Bull. like, oh, okay. Oh, all right. People just seem to get, get in line with it. Um, kind of like, all right, we got to do it. All right, all right, all right. Like, people are backing down. Other people are backing right down. You're looking at this with the Eight of Swords, just kind of like, if I push any harder, I'm gonna, there's going to be problems in the sense of like I'm going to have issues to deal with. And you're just kind of like, listen, I gotta, I just kind of go with the current. I gotta go with the current here. So, you the pushback happens, and you're like, all right, all right, hold on, hold on. So the change is going forward. But this is the trick. This is what this whole reading is about, is what I'm getting. You get to this point, and the sooner you accept the current going where it's going to go, like you can't dam up the river, it's going to go through. Once you accept that, then you have to use the current flow to your advantage. It's one of those things where it's like, once you surrender to it, you don't feel trapped by it anymore, but you surrender to it, like, all right, fine. Eh, it's going to happen. Fine. And it's kind of like, you're not excited about it at first, but more the more you surrender to it, then you can start navigating and using it to your advantage. Because that's the whole thing. It's like, instead of resisting it, like you try, you give an honest try to stop. But once you're like, all right, well, all right, all right, I guess I have to give in to this because it's going to happen. So you start flowing with it. That's when you get the magician. But it comes in with, with the people you're working with. Other people that stood with you and said, no, we don't want this either. This is where you can work together to figure out this new way of doing things. What are the parameters? What are the rules? Where are the gray areas? Where where are where's the there is the uh, wiggle room here? Because you know what? Granted, we all don't really care for how this is going, but there's enough here for us to work with. Maybe we can shape this a better way so that we that way we can make it the best we can for us. And I feel like you're going to be like a very strong leader in that. In the sense of like working with other people, kind of like, listen, it's going forward. I'm, I'm, let's stop resisting it and let's move with it. But like we have to – let's look out for each other. Where Where's the wiggle room? Where are the gray areas? Where can we bend and mold this more to our liking so we can enjoy this more? I mean we only have a certain amount of wiggle room, but let's at least figure out what it is and use it to our advantage. And I figure – and that's what I feel like is going to, this is what this whole thing is about. You regaining control about with the new rules, the new way things are going, regaining control that way. The sooner you go along with the way the new things are, the new way things are flowing, the sooner you can, you know, get a hold of that and, you know, start driving it where you want it to go. And you're going to have a lot of support around you. These people who stood with you and said, you know what, we don't like this either, but backed right down in the tower head, that's fine. But those are the same people that when you're like, let's find a better way to work this so we're all happy, they're going to be right there with you and they're going to help you in 
stand with you to help you make that happen as well. So keep that in mind. These people are on your side. That's the best part of this reading for this to kind of like accept it. Once you have acceptance, making it do what you want it to do for the best, for whatever you can, the best you can. You know, you're in with, within parameters still, yeah. But you have enough wiggle room to create something more to your liking and the people around you. All right. Until I, so I don't like, reiterate it a 50th time, I'm going to shut that down there. All right, so thank you for watching. If you'd like a direct reading from me, shoot me an email, jamesforastral at gmail.com. It's james, the number four, astral at gmail.com. Thank you.